Today, a look at the Tesla Model 3 OBD kit. Well, it's actually two parts here. Now, Tesla Model 3 2018, my model, has a slightly different adapter cable here, but you can use this OBD Link MX Plus for any Tesla Model 3 or Model Y for that matter. The Tesla Model 3 was the first car that was built without the requirement for an OBD port. So, this little uh, unboxing or unbagging will cover what it looks like to retrofit or add one to your car. All right, here's the device. It's a custom cable harness where basically we're injecting this connector in the back of the center console. So female, male ends, it'll basically be going in line and then we'll tuck this away in a pocket underneath the center console, get that out of the way but we'll leave this OBD socket dangling out so that we can pair Bluetooth with iPhone. So the iPhone is the recent part here, where it used to be uh, Android only, but as of May of 2020 here, we can, do, we can now do iOS as well. But of course there's paperwork, all right. I like black because this is gonna be left tucked by the back of the driver's seat. And I don't really want it quite so visible. Alrighty, that's talking about some software. We're going to be using Scan My Tesla for iOS. And there you go. I get directions. Uh, no idea what that one is. Let's just have a look here. All right, this just goes over the initial Bluetooth pairing. All right, let's have a close look at the device. The next I'm gonna head over to my car. Looks so well designed. We've got some tiny screws here. We'll need to fiddle with those. Cost of this one's a little more than the bottom dollar model. That's bright uh, yellow or orange, I think it was. All right, not a whole lot to see here until I get this thing powered on. And that'll need to wait until I get it in the car. Yeah, you can even see the pins and labels, so. There you go, a pretty close look at that hardware. Now let's look at this hardware. So there's pins of where it's going in. I'm gonna remove this, because I don't really want that catching attention when it's in the car. Sticking out from underneath the bottom lip of the center console, back shielded plate there, plastic cover. Um, looks well crafted, all the pins look nicely aligned. These cables feel solid, we've got strain relief on here. Heat shrink tubing, very nice. Another strain relief, zip tie. Feels good. I'm not gonna put any strain or go yanking on this anyway. But yeah, this feels like this, ready, this is ready for long haul and for years of service in my car. And I could always pull it out if I want to. This obviously goes like that. Ooh, very tight. I like that. Doesn't feel like I'm gonna have any problems there. So that's about it. Time to get out a little blade here and very carefully with the sharp end of the blade away, get that cable nicked. Sorry, get that cable label nicked. And now I should be able to just pull it right off. Oh, nice. I don't really feel a significant amount of goo there. Just a little bit. I don't think I even need goo gone. All right, to prepare the car, we're gonna make sure it's not charging. And I'm gonna go ahead and go in the driver door here and open that window. We're gonna to need to have access to the screen here, and we're actually gonna turn off the car by reaching in. So it's important not to be sitting in the chair when you do that. The other prep step is opening the rear door and making sure to leave it open. All right, so now I'm ready to reach in and go to the car menu. Go to safety and security, power off, and tap it again to confirm the screen goes off. So the car is powering down, but it's not actually powered in, powered down all the way until you wait about, I think it's uh, somewhere in the range of two to 10 minutes when we hear a clunk. And those are the relays opening by the battery. And that's when the car is truly powered off. And at that point, we'll be ready to proceed with the minor bit of surgery, which involves simply pulling off this plastic cover. So I'll be right back when that's all ready to go. Okay, I'm ready to proceed now. I did have to turn off in the same safety and security menu, 
mobile data sharing and type in my test of password and that allowed me to get the car to go to sleep heard a loud clunk took about five minutes the wheel well lights went off the ambient lights went off in the car and now I'm leaning over making sure not to lean on the rear seats I don't think they'll wake up the car and I've got my um, I fix it spudgers here or tools to hopefully uh, fairly easily get this off and what I've seen on videos is basically prying at the upper right is the way to go to start Hit the first clip oh that was easy all right no problem next clip and next clip oh that's very easy all right and then the bottom two this floor mat 3d spider mat is not really getting in the way at all so that's how the back of this looks I'm using my Apple watch to frame the video here so here's where we're gonna put the wiring harness so we've got space for this down there but first we've got to release this so if we get this clip nylon clip pushed in now I should be able to um, release that so how about I try to make it so you can see on camera what I'm doing applying pressure here and here I don't know if you heard that incredibly loud motorcycle going by so again we've got a nylon quick release here making sure it's pushed on and trying to get this out it's taking a little bit more pressure Notice I'm not exerting any pressure on wires because I wouldn't want to do that. But um, I don't know, I'm tempted to just use my fingernail. Yeah, that's applying a good amount of pressure. The release is definitely released. Now it's a matter of working that out of there. Okay, got that done. Now, got that upside down. There we go. Click. All right, so I'm gonna wanna put this in here. turned okay click and get the cover put back on so that was pretty straightforward getting this down here probably wedge that in the seat there as long as that's underneath okay I just heard the relay open so the car seems to be on which is a little bit alarming something woke up the car maybe plugging that OBD in I don't know so it's a little bit weird none of that's high voltage what I did but that would indicate that this is probably on and indeed it is so now I'm ready for a pairing okay in the App Store we're gonna type scan my Tesla you can see we have the Bluetooth Showing in the background, it looks like it's in pairing mode with blinking blue, kind of universal symbol for Bluetooth. All right, this requires one of these devices. I think I'm just gonna be clicking, tapping next. Okay, scroll left and right to select different dashboards, blah, 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 it's telling me how to use it. Okay. Now naturally I'm going to have to go and do a Bluetooth pairing. Let's see if it walks me through that or not. Okay, so now we got to go to Bluetooth settings. Bluetooth was not even on. I believe even if Bluetooth had been on, we'd still have to, you know, do the usual pairing step. 
it might have jumped to it a little more uh, gracefully. I still have the blinking blue light. So I was kind of hoping I'd see it here, but maybe I'm going to have to push the button on the OBD device. All right, that's taking kind of long, so let's uh, zoom in down here. Wow, I just heard a loud clunk. So now let's see if we can get this thing showing up by pushing the little button in the bottom left. Pushing and holding it. That seemed to do nothing. Nope, it did. Okay, now it's blinking fast. It's connected. Excellent. Here we go. So maybe the car is not woken up. Okay, I just tried turning on ambient lighting and it failed. So these are the same things you might go through. So let's lock focus there. I'm going to put the lapel mic down for a moment. I'm going to go sit in the front seat and get the car woken up. Front screen's on. And pushing the pedal. Wants me to tap the key card. So I gotta go get a key card. Okay, tap the key card. Well, that seemed to work. Tapping the key card, got the car to properly wake up. Now we're good. So, this is awesome. The process is all done now. I should be able to tuck the module away and um, test this out a little bit. There are many videos about this, but they're all on Android, so I'm not sure how different the iOS one is. But uh, I guess I'll find out soon. And the car went off again. <laughs> Alright, that's going to keep happening unless I'm in the driver's seat, probably. It's fairly level here. Now the um, torque to the wheels is going to vary. And, you know, it's a very smart cruise control. It'll vary constantly. So, um, yes, 67 miles per hour is what it's saying. On my screen, it says 68, so that's kind of interesting, a discrepancy. But hard to say if that's 0.1 off or 0.5 off, I don't know. Let's um, show a different display. All right, so it's the kilowatts. So just maintaining my 67 or 68 miles per hour speed, whatever it is I'm at, you'll see the kilowatts constantly changing. And the split between... Um, front and wheels, front and rear wheels also uh, varying there. And that's about it for this uh, look at Scan My Test Lab. That's the last functions to show. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully you'll also consider visiting my many articles about Tesla ownership based on over 25,000 miles of experience with two Tesla Model 3s. And that's at tinkertry.com forward slash Tesla or tinkertry.com forward slash Tesla vids in my YouTube channel. Thank you again for tuning in. Bye now.